hello and welcome uh, to the IS update uh, for June. Um, today we have quite an exciting agenda uh, lined up, which I will get to in a minute. But firstly, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land in which we're meeting today. Uh, for me, that is the Tarrable people um, uh, here in sunny Brisbane. And I would like to acknowledge their deep connection to land, water and culture and pay my respects to their elders past, present. Um, also welcome to our colleagues across the ditch um, in New Zealand and Kia ora. Today we have, uh, as I said, quite an exciting agenda. Um, firstly, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some changes we've made to the IS business model and uh, the way which we operate. Um, we're then going to roll in um, and Dr. Kerry Griffiths, our IS technical director, is going to talk to you about the IS version 2.1 planning tool as we bring that out of beta phase testing and into the market. We'll then, um, then have a presentation from uh, Jane Nichols, our Chief Engagement and Delivery of, uh, Development Officer, um, who is uh, going to talk to us about our membership events and iSupply. And then finally, Hayley Greaves, our Head of Learning and Capability, talking to us about our training, um, training portfolio and what are the new developments in that space. Um, as I said, Today, I'd like to talk to you um, a little bit about some changes we've made to, to our business model to make us more sustainable longer term, but also to, um, to enable us to better support um, our rating partners and our broader sector. So I'd like to start sort of by talking about what are the drivers for the change and, and why we've made the change, what the changes are, um, and then finally, um, what the impact will be. Um, in terms of the drivers uh, under underpinning the change, um, firstly, uh, we sort of looked at what the market challenges are sitting across our sector. And none of these will be a massive surprise to you, but we, we've been looking at what the supply chain shortages and program delays look like, uh, the increased demand for ESG and assured data, the changes in the legisl legislative environment, um, and I guess the introduction of, of legislated targets and mandatory disclosures. Um, the market capability constraints sitting across the sector at the moment, um, the sustainability skill scarcity, and then finally a shift in our benchmarks, i.e. sustainability as it becomes more and more a focus for projects, performance levels are shifting and therefore we've needed to shift and look at our benchmarks. In terms of um, what we value, no, sorry, what you as members have told us you value, either through member surveys um, or, or feedback through our feedback loop or within discussions with our PMs or the broader team. What we've heard from you is that you really you really value a well-supported rating partnership. You're looking for assurance with really good governance. Um, you want well-maintained tools that are driving best practice. You value continuous improvement of the tools and continuous improvement of the systems and processes that sit around those tools. You're looking for greater efficiency and cost effect effectiveness in delivering ratings. And then finally, you're looking for access to that assured data in a more uh, immediate and more available manner. In terms of, I guess, what we're looking to drive uh, as a part of this shift, um, I say maintain service levels, but in, the, in a number of cases, that's making sure that we're resourced effectively to maintain the service levels that you've come to value. The second one is to invest in the scheme, um, provide access to, to the data we um, We've, we certify, but also create process efficiencies um, and continuously maintain the benchmarks. And then finally, uh, start to progress in a more active and more visible fashion, those high priority initiatives or areas of interest. So starting to speak more broadly and advocate around resilience, inclusivity and net zero. And then also uh, using the data and using the, the rating scheme to provide greater aligned reporting and, and a position and visibility for the sector. In terms of uh, what that actually looks like, I guess the shift in our business model um, really sits around uh, the introduction of a change in our fee structure. In our current model, we charge an upfront fee, which is registration and support. And that lump sum um, was predicated on a project lasting, each delivery phase of the project lasting 18 months. Um, that is far from what we're experiencing in the market and therefore we're wearing quite a significant amount of cost 
um, in terms of in terms of providing the support we do. The second part of our current fee is a near completion fee or the assurance fee, um, and that assurance fee <coughs> um, provides for assurance and certification. From one July, the shift in our model um, is is quite uh, well, very similar, but really just de-risking some of that that project uh, project length piece. So firstly, there is an upfront, upfront fee, a registration fee, and that registration fee includes access to I, our IP, but also the support for the organization to continuously maintain the benchmarks and continuously improve the tool. The second is the annual, annual support fee. And the annual support fee um, runs for the, for the length of the project, and that's the support from the project manager. Um, and continues will continue throughout, as I said, through throughout the length of the project. And then finally, that near completion fee, which is that assurance and certification fee. In terms of the pricing, the pricing has been published was published on our website um, a couple of weeks ago, um, and is available for you to have a look. There is an increase in 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 the fees across the board, um, both in terms of what the upfront fee is. The annual fee obviously has an increase because it's uh, spread over time, and then finally there are a slight increase in the near, in the assurance fee as well. As I said, if you'd like to have a look at the fee increases, uh, they are on the board. It's important to note that this shift in model does not fit retrospectively into existing contracts. So if you have a current contract with us, the terms, um, the terms, and the way in which the pricing is structured remains in place for the length of your contract or for the length of your project. Um, I will now pass over to, um, to Dr. Kerry Griffiths uh, to talk about talk to you about the IS version 2.1 planning tool, how we've reviewed it, and then uh, how, we're, how we're looking to bring that into the market more broadly. Um, Kerry, over to you. Great, um, thanks Patrick, and um, thanks to everybody. Um, for being with us here today. So, um, yeah, great to be able to join this update. I'm going to talk, as um, Pat said, about the 2.1 planning rating, which we are very close to um, releasing into the market. Um, but let's just uh, reflect here first on the importance, why we've developed a planning rating um, and what the benefits of that are. Um, I think we'd all agree, and certainly our members and stakeholders have reinforced with us the need to embed sustainability from the earliest possible stage. Um, we know that um, decisions you make early in the planning process have a really um, significant outcome and impact on sustainability outcomes. So bringing in a planning rating really um, in a structured way uh, provides a framework and a, um, guidance and performance framework around um, doing that in a rigorous and um, repeatable fashion. So the next slide, thanks. Um, the planning rating review, we've had a planning rating in the market um, since 2018. Uh, and so the review that we've just recently undertaken over the last 12 to 18 months, a little bit longer, I'll show you the timeframe in a moment, um, has, um, used the feedback from the beta projects, the 18 beta projects that participated, participated mainly in Western Australia. So thanks to our pilot projects and um, particularly um, Main Roads WA and various teams and contributing there. And the planning rating focuses on um, from strategic options assessment through to being ready to go to tender for the design and asphalt phase. Uh, the update follows the beta project, extensive consultation and feedback, um, and also the update to design and ASPIL, which has informed the, um, some of the changes in the planning rating as well. Next slide. Uh, so you can see here where the planning rating fits um, into the um, infrastructure life cycle. Um, in version 2.0, the first planning rating, we just had one tool. Um, now we have separated those into a strategic planning rating and detailed planning rating, and that was a significant res a response to a significant amount of the feedback that we had from the beta project and from stakeholders. And so next slide. You can see here the timeline. So 2018, the launch of the first planning rating. And this is the um, first tool of its kind. 
um, in Australia and New Zealand, but also internationally. Uh, most of the rating tools focus on that design and construction. You can see here the timeline. Um, we started consultation um, as well as the feedback from the beta projects, but um, had specific planning uh, workshops with stakeholders, um, both uh, rating partners, but also investors and influencers. And then um, really um, got serious in the review in 2022, um, where we GHD joined us as an external support consultant. Um, we identified out the option that we were going to pursue, and we've gone through significant work to uh, release and prepare the manual. The technical manual is now on display. So for those who are ISAPs, um, it's on the ISAP resources. And um, so that gives you a chance to have a look at the new manual. Um, we've got some work to finalize um, the supporting tools um, and um, finish off our governance process. And we're hoping to start official registrations in September. Next slide, thanks. Uh, this is just a summary here of the stakeholder engagement to date, um, broken down into a bit more detail. I'd like to um, do a big shout out to the IS Planning Technical Working Group in particular, um, that met with us multiple times to go through some of the details and credits and some of the changes that we were going to make or, or um, options that we were exploring. And we really value their feedback as well as the feedback from all participants in the uh, workshop series that we held over 2022 and 2023. Um, we got some specific feedback um, again from um, our Western Australian colleagues who were uh, undertaking the beta projects. So thanks for that. Moving now to um, a bit more detail on the tool. Next slides. So the, um, from 2.0 to 2.1 planning, um, we have a tool, strategic planning tool, which has seven credits. We've got the detailed planning tool, which has um, 30 credits and is um, most similar to the tool that's currently in the market. Um, and we've removed six credits um, to fit better with what is possible within planning um, and what really belongs in design and as built. So a summary there of some of the key changes around the credits that were removed, um, the involvement of stakeholders and particularly um, uh, a focus on relationships with indigenous people on the land. Uh, a much stronger focus on carbon considerations, as you can imagine, in the options assessment phase, and really clear handover requirements for further phases. Next slide. So uh, just a, a few other items to note, I'm sure of interest to those who have been using the tool to date and are looking forward to uh, using the updated tool. So that separation of planning and strategic and detailed planning ratings, a reduction in the number of must statements um, from the planning technical manual to the new technical manual, a removal of all should statements. So that's just to be really clear about what the requirements are. So no um, ambig ambiguity around that. Um, and also there were some key decisions from 2.1 design and as well technical manual review that have been reflected. So there's alignment across the scheme. Um, and an example of that is the um, suitably qualified professionals. We landed on two particular focus um, areas in terms of standardization of experience. Now, just a little bit of detail on the individual rating. So strategic planning rating, as I said earlier, there's seven credits. And you can see here what those are. Um, strategic context, um, LEA1 around integrating sustainability, um, some key elements around climate and resilience, options assessment, um, and then uh, benefits also, impact assessment and benefits mapping. ECN1, and this is the first time we've done this in our tool, um, ECN1 is a mandatory credit, and that's because really the key focus of this rating is to um, embed sustainability in the options assessment. So it made sense for that to be a requirement. Um, the strategic planning rating, because there are a number of elements that are new in terms of our approach, is in the pilot, is in a pilot phase. And we have some projects already using the rating tool, which is fantastic, getting some great feedback from them. But anyone who is interested in um, participating in that pilot, um, please be in touch because we are keen to uh, have a good set of projects give us feedback on uh, how that's working for them. 
Next. Um, this slide just uh, shows you the credit flow. Um, because there are seven credits, it's very easy to see where the flow is. Um, we've got um, the LEA1 at governance. There's an assessment process um, across the middle there. And then there is further um, impact assessment in more detail um, by the impact credit, the uh, resilience credit, and the um, ECN2 credit, which is around equity and distributional impacts. Next slide, thanks. The detailed planning, um, as I say, those who have used the tool to date will um, recognize this, um, but it's clearly removed the strategic planning rating elements or strategic planning elements. Those have gone into the separate rating. There are 30 credits. Um, all of the beta rulings have been incorporated. Um, and really we've removed some elements that just didn't make sense, as I said earlier, to be in that um, in the planning rating and left those to sit in design and as well. Carbon again has got a stronger focus, um, particularly around the business case and consideration across the scheme. And there's clear information on transition from strategic to detailed and indeed detailed to design and as well. And we've had some great feedback um, from the beta projects where a planning rating has been um, completed and the real difference that that makes for the design and asphalt team in terms of their preparedness and readiness um, to be able to take steps, stronger steps to embed sustainability. Next slide. Uh, I know that this is, um, is a pretty hard to read probably, but you'll be able to kind of um, take a look when you get another copy of this. Or well, you can look in the technical manual. Um, it just outlines what the what the thirty credits are. They're very similar to design and asphalt, but cut back in some areas. So, for example, um, in sustainable procurement, we only have one credit. In the earlier planning rating, we had three, and that just really didn't make sense. So we've um, really tried to hone in and make sure that this tool now really reflects the activities within the planning stage of preparing for infrastructure development. And the final slide, thanks. Um, just another shout out to um, GHD. Um, we worked very closely with Amy Elkington and her team uh, in undertaking this review and uh, including the stakeholder engagement. And um, it was really a successful relationship. So I really appreciate the effort and um, input that we had from that group in our development of the new planning tools. Thanks so much and look forward to any questions later on. Cheers. Just handing over now to Jane. Thank you, Kerry. And uh, uh, great to be here with you today and uh, look forward to taking you through some of the developments happening in the membership events and uh, I supply space. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, a quick uh, update on uh, our team as it currently sits. We keep growing uh, and uh, I hope that you're feeling the impact of um, the growth in the team to enable us to work with you more closely on all of the opportunities to engage um, across our channels and in terms of all of the things that we do, conferencing, podcasts and so on. Thank you. A very warm welcome to our newest members. It's great to see that we're representing a number of new members from right across the supply chain. Um, and good to see that the market in Tasmania uh, is opening up, which is um, uh, a really significant development in terms of our coverage right across the country uh, and into New Zealand. So welcome everybody, great to have you on board. We now have over 230 organisations um, committed to the journey of sustainability in infrastructure. Uh, as you would all know, we represent all parts of the value chain. Um, so over the next, uh, this slide and two further, you'll see that representation. Um, you'll get a copy of this presentation and you may find it quite interesting to have a look at um, just who is represented. In respect to uh, what we bring to you via our membership uh, association is quite significant. A quick reminder, I'm not going to labour this, many of you will be very uh, clear on this, um, but certainly in the space of community networking and engagement, 
Uh, we do so much in this space and I encourage you all to keep that in mind. If you follow our newsletter, you'll see what's coming up. We're very um, keen to work with you on making sure that every member that's with us has the opportunity to use our channels to help both profile what you're doing in your people um, and any of the new developments going on. Excuse me, I have two dogs fighting behind me. I um, uh, stop them doing that. Um, but there's lots, lots that you can get involved with and just please get in touch and we'll work with you on an individual basis to see um, how we can take your profile and, and developments further. Preferential pricing and access is a very important part of your membership. Generally speaking, it's about a 30% reduction in price for members versus non-members, and of course, the access that it provides you with. You'll learn a bit more about what's going on in our capability space. Haley and her team are, con are continuously developing uh, new learning modules, new opportunities to uh, really develop different parts of the value chain. Um, so listen to what she has to say. And in the meantime, or at other times, don't hesitate to get in touch to see if there's something that we might be able to assist with, um, whether that's um, an existing product or we customise something specifically for you. Advocacy and influence are really important part of what we do. Falling into that, our thought leadership work and our coalitions. Um, the iSupply space, the online showcase, uh, I'm going to talk about that in a moment, uh, but suffice to say here, our online directory, if you've got a product or service, um, and depending on your membership package, um, there are free listings on iSupply. Uh, and whilst it will take you a little bit of work just to get that all loaded up with our help, um, really worthwhile for you to do that. Uh, so that in consideration uh, when projects are underway and they're looking for suppliers or services that they can access, it's one of the first ports of call to find like-minded parties with products that are or services that are built or designed for sustainability. Um, I'd just like to call out specifically our member coalitions. Um, we have four coalitions that are very much geared to um, addressing really important uh, areas or issues that the coalition groups define. Um, they work on an action plan, they work on implementation, and we support those coalitions in taking that um, to the wider audience, to government as appropriate. Um, and I encourage you to think about those in your, um, in, in, within your organization, who are well past graduate stage, but are really starting to show leadership uh, and helping you to um, uh, achieve impact and innovation. They're just the sort of people that might uh, value being involved in a coalition. And of course, our technical working groups, um, these are uh, a, an imperative part of our continuous development. Um, there are six technical working groups uh, and they play such an important role um, to ensure that we are evolving our tools. Now, they are all full at the moment, uh, but if you're interested in joining a technical group, don't hesitate to let us know and we'll put you on a wait list. Thanks, Lauren. Um, content marketing opportunities. Um, the one and only point I'd like to say to you is that every month we are publishing content whether it's case studies, specific impact and innovation, we're profiling leaders, um, we're looking for your content and this is the part where we need you to lean, lean in. Um, I didn't mention specifically sustainability leadership in the previous slide because I wanted to bring it out here. It's your opportunity to make sure that you're telling the market that you're working um, in, a, in a very focused manner to ensure that in every infrastructure project, sustainability is embedded from the outset. Um, and you have the, these three types of environment in which you might wish to contribute. Thanks, Lauren. Um, I supply, um, my key message in this 
context, if we can just go to the next slide, thanks, Lauren, is that um, we are currently working very hard, having uh, gone out to market um, to hear what you have to say, to understand better the challenges that you're facing and to make sure that this uh, opportunity of the directory is working for you. Uh, we look forward to be able to, to release some developments um, in the next or in the first half of the new financial year. So two things, if you're not already on iSupply and have a, have a product or service that should be here, take advantage of it. Um, and in the meantime, we're working on some new developments which we'll bring to you shortly. Thanks, Lauren. Um, if you're interested, scan the code. There are some hints, uh, some tips and tricks really to make sure that you get the best out of your iSupply listing. It's uh, not something I'm going to go through today, but these six points are absolutely, they're really straightforward, but they'll make the world of difference in terms of the success of your iSupply listing. Member engagement, if we can go to the next slide. Um, we are doing an extraordinary number of events uh, through the course of the year. They're of all different um, scales and um, they, in many instances, are face-to-face -face again, but we're doing a lot of virtual work as well. Um, the um, newsletter that comes out each fortnight is always uh, talking about uh, the various opportunities available to you, um, but we've been in, incredibly busy, particularly in the last period, doing knowledge share sessions and certification forums. Um, we've just completed uh, Melbourne. Uh, we're into Canberra next week, on to Brisbane, into Adelaide, um, and over to uh, over the ditch to Christchurch in Auckland a little later in the year. Um, we're also doing something with Blue Scope on the 18th of October. Um, we're taking uh, a number of you. Um, the opportunity to register hasn't opened yet, but it will be to do a, a tour uh, of the Port Kembla site, and I encourage you to look out for that. But the most important thing on this, um, uh, really just a snip of our overall calendar, is, of course, September 5 to 7, where we'll be holding our annual Connect Conference in Australia, comprising the ISAP Day certification and dinner, as well as the main plenary. Um, just to make sure all of you are aware of this, we have moved the leadership breakfast to take place on Tuesday morning, as opposed to Wednesday. And then we'll hold our Infrastructure Sustainability Professionals Day um, uh, straight after breakfast. Um, really, a really fantastic agenda there. And we're going to be offering you the option of uh, one site tour or, or two education options. There'll be three options all falling at the same time. So it's to give you a, a, a breadth of choice um, and uh, watch our uh, website to see the developments in that space. On Wednesday and Thursday, sorry, Lauren, I'll just get you to go back. Uh, we'll have uh, our main plenary both days. We'll have two stages functioning with our certification dinner, which will be held at Zinc Restaurant Federation Square on Wednesday night and Thursday night will be at the same venue as the main plenary, which is the Timber Yard in uh, Port Melbourne, our gala dinner and awards night, which is always really exciting. Um, we have David Spears, who will be um, leading our uh, MC work on Wednesday and Thursday during the day. Um, and we've got a bit of a surprise for you for the gala dinner night. Any inquiries, don't hesitate to scan the QR code and can't wait to see you all um, on 5th, 6th and 7th of October. Oh, so, no, sorry, September. Please don't get that wrong. 5th to 7th of September. Over to Hayley. Thank you, Jane. Um, I'll just take a minute to remind everyone that the Q&A section is open. If you've got any questions on the business model, planning, or our membership opportunities, please pop in um, in the Q&A and Pat will facilitate that at the end. I've just got a few things to run you through today. And the first one is a bit of an update of what we've got going on in learning and capability. 
Um, so under sustainability leadership and culture, we've got a number of offerings, but the, the update is that we have opened expressions of interest for the RISE Leadership Mentoring 2024 cohort. Um, and the reason we've done that is because this year's 2023 was um, oversubscribed and, and quite a few of you um, unfortunately missed out. So get in early, get in your expressions of interest and we'll keep you up to date when applications open early 2024. Um, you can find the expression of interest on the website in the image to the top right. Just go learning, rise mentoring, and then the, scroll down a little bit and there's a button that says express your interest. Um, there's a few updates for the courses in IS for Professionals Pathway. Um, as Kerry was talking about, we've got the IS Planning Technical Manual on display now, um, planning to open registration in September. And to support that will be IS Planning Training. If you are already an ISA, you can come straight to the IS Planning Training. Um, if you are not an ISAP, you must undertake the IS um, Rating Skills Training first. Um, and all that information can be found on our website. IS Essentials, um, that training will be following in 2024. So keep an eye out for that and updates there. Um, and a reminder that we have um, a number of ISAP webinars that are available on IS Learn in the ISAP resources to support anyone that is undertaking a rating. Jane mentioned, and Jane was talking about the iSupply platform and online directory. Um, we have a webinar to support sustainable suppliers available on YouTube. Um, so if you go to our YouTube channel and just type in um, Infrastructure Sustainability Council, um, Sustainable Suppliers webinar is the one you're looking for. Um, and if you are interested in more um, workshops or offerings in that space, we do have a course called IS for Suppliers. Um, so feel free to reach out to us if you want to um, upskill your team or support your organization. Um, in preparing uh, communications or documentation around um, the sustainability um, practices. Next slide, please, Lauren. Um, end of financial year discounts in training. All right, so you don't want to miss these ones. We've got quite a few on here. So they're available from the 19th of June until the 19th of July. So that's the only time that these discounts will be available. Um, so for planning, for IS planning, if you're super keen and you want to um, register for the first planning course and you'd like 10% off, do it within that, uh, that, that month space between 19th of June, 19th of July. And you can go on um, our website and just type, uh, go through the registration and use the promo code EOFY23, end of financial year 23, and you'll receive 10% off your registration. If you're looking for some organizational training or in-house workshops, some bespoke offerings, um, and the second end of financial year discount is for you. So there's a couple of options here. You can book one bespoke training um, and you'll receive one ISAP training. So the full ISAP pathway for anyone in your organization. If you book two ISAP, uh, sorry, two bespoke in-house trainings, you will receive six months um, free access to IS foundations for your entire organization. So if you've got a, a large organization, you can get as many people through that in the six months as you wish. Um, and the eligible offerings for the bespoke offerings are um, listed on the, sorry, my screen's not showing it, but I believe that um, in italics at the bottom there, those eligible courses. Um, contact us if you want any more information or if you'd like to avail of that discount. Thanks, Laura. Next slide. And then finally, coming your way will be a skills survey. Uh, the ISC and Contractor Working Group have developed this skills survey um, for infrastructure sustainability professionals. Um, and the findings of this survey will help us um, and industry inform areas of development for current and future sustainability skills. And the reason that it is on a yellowy orange slide with a present in the bottom left is because there will be a, a quite a large incentive to, to go ahead and complete this. Um, there's only under, there's under 20 questions, so it shouldn't take you too long. And um, it's for anybody involved in delivering an IS rating. And there's a few questions on you, although it will be anonymous, but more around age and, and current role and current experience. Um, 
what you perceive as potential barriers to impacting change in infrastructure sustainability. The majority of the questions are around current and future skills, and those skills are broken into technical skills around sustainability and core skills around um, behaviour and transferable skills. There's a little bit around your motivations entering the sector and staying in the sector and your career aspirations within the sector. And then finally, there's a little bit more on the um, on the preparedness of the sector to address any future focus areas in sustainability. So just before I hand back to Pat and we go to questions and answers, um, just a little reminder that at the end of the webinar, there will be a survey um, about this webinar. If you would take a minute or so just to complete that, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you, over to Pat. Thanks, Haley. Fantastic. Um, we have been trying to answer questions as they've come into the Q&A throughout the session. Um, that's too many sessions in one sentence. Uh, <clears throat> however, if you've got further questions, please get them in there. Um, I might just quickly bounce through the ones we have responded to. Um, so, Mark, the, the short answer around Mark's question, which is with the increase in rating fees, is it possible for the ISC to provide further information on what services are being provided to undertake building business cases to undertake a rating? Um, we have been working with the asset owners um, as we've looked at our pricing structure. So they are aware of the, they have been aware of the price, pricing increase um, coming. Um, but also if you reach out to us, um, we can talk through the individual individual context for each of those, uh, each of those discussions. The second question was really about the use of the word assurance and whether or not we're providing verification anymore or whether we're changing and shaking that up significantly. Um, the answer is no, we are still using verification as our methodology of assurance um, and we are still, uh, still doing the verification across the rating scheme and not individual credits. Um, so there is no change to the approach to the rating, rating tool. Um, as it stands. Um, Jane, I might throw to you for the third question, um, <clears throat> which is, will attendee, will the Con Connect conference have the option for virtual attendance? Sure, Pat. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, if you just go to the website, uh, www.iscouncil.org, uh, if you open up the tab to events and then click on ticketing, you'll see all of the options um, both face-to-face -face and virtual, but also a number of packages um, that have been designed with a with a level of discount to help you participate in as much as that you as you'd like. That's great. Any questions? Thanks. Don't hesitate to let us know. That's great. Thanks, Jane. And then Haley, this one's for you. Can anyone send uh, Can anyone send through to the participants of today's webinar the EOI uh, for the IS Rise program for 2024? Yes, we certainly will. I'll work with Lauren to have that link put in there. Yeah, and I might just do a quick uh, plug whilst it is the IS Rise program. A big plug to Gamuda as the major sponsor for for that mentoring program. Um, I love it when Siri kicks into gear. Um, so uh, I might just leave uh, leave it open. Uh, if there are any other questions, we'll give it one more minute. Um, otherwise, I really thank you all for taking the time out to join us today. Um, thank you for a massive year uh, when we talk about financial years and I look forward to working with all of you over the... Um, <laughs> and always there's one one curly one. Uh, the verification process is in desperate need of review. Are there any plans to reimagine this process? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, the review of the verification process is uh, is on the work plan for the next six months um, for the ISC. And there'll be more of that, more, more on that to come as we go through that review process. But uh, yep, the uh, the process is absolutely um in in the review phase um if there aren't any other questions i might at this uh, point in time say thank you all so much for joining us uh, please reach out if you have any further questions we will make the uh, presentation pack 
um, and uh, the response to some of those questions available um, to all participants. Uh, so thank you for taking the time out and we look forward to working with you in the new financial year. Oh, I've got one more question come through as people start to drop off. There is a notable absence of proponents in the consultation for planning, only main roads. It's not the consultation process, that was the pilot process um, that we're, we're engaged in the, in the use of the planning tool. Um, however, the consultation process for the planning rating has been across all jurisdictions um, and has engaged um, with a multitude of different organisations within those jurisdictions. Kerry, would you like to say anything more yeah, on that? Yeah. Yeah, um, thanks for that. Um, Main Roads WA, we um, singled out here because they participated in the beta um, projects, so most of the um, actual planning projects. But in terms of the consultation, uh, we had um, multiple uh, workshops with proponents, um, both current users and future users of the planning rating. And also in our planning technical working group, we have proponent representation. So um, absolutely a not um, just in Australia, but across Australia and New Zealand, we had uh, a range of proponents participating. And we did also reach out to um, other proponents when we had particular items that we were looking to explore that we felt would impact um, on proponents particularly. So yep, certainly, um, while we recognise Main Roads WA because of their um, great contribution, there was a much wider range involved. Thanks, Pat. Yep, no problems. Thanks, Kerry. Um, looks after the. So, Craig, a question from Craig Could I have a discussion with who looks after the approval of products to be on the ISC website, please? Craig, uh, in the first instance, I'll uh, defer that to, to Jane and her team. Um, and, Jane, if you'd be able to reach out to Craig or one of your team be able to reach out to Craig to have that conversation. Um, and then, will there be virtual tickets available for the ISAP training day? Is the last question. Uh, no, there's there's actually not tickets available for the ISAP day. Um, so I hope that you might be able to attend who, whoever has asked that question. But there will be virtual tickets, as I said, for both uh, the, the two days of the main plenary. That's great. Thank you very much, Jane. And with that flurry, um, we might say, oh, we got another one. No problems. Thanks, Craig. Um, we'll make sure we've taken note of that. Um, with that uh, in mind, I might say thank you once again to all of you, and we look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.